This is the Sanyong Rexton, and on paper at least, it's a well-equipped seven-seater four-wheel drive wagon. And with a price tag under $60,000, then it is a pretty good value for money consideration. But is it any good as a four-wheel drive? Well, that's what we're here to find out, so stick around. The Rexton is available in two variants, the ELX and the Upspec Ultimate. Our test vehicle is the Ultimate, and it's got a starting price from around the $56,000 mark. Standard features inside the Rexton include this 8-inch multimedia touchscreen, and that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's also a wireless charging pad and a bunch of prestige -y sort of things like the sunroof, heated and ventilated front seats, as well as this nice-looking quilted Nappa leather throughout. This Rexton has 18-inch alloy wheels and exterior paint choices on the Ultimate include Grand White, Fine Silver and Atlantic Blue which comes at an extra cost and it's on our test vehicle. There are many considerations to take into account when you're thinking about using your four-wheel drive as it's actually intended as an off-road vehicle. Some of those things are mechanical, some of those boil down to driver assist technology but some of the things are even more basic than that and I'm talking about ground clearance, off-road angles, wading depth, all of those factors come into play. And this Rexton just doesn't have a lot of ground clearance. It's about 203 millimeters and its off-road angles are very shallow. Approach, ramp over in the middle and departure at the back. And there are a few things that I've come to notice in a very short space of time. And there's some plastic cladding here. It's intended as underbody protection, but it is pretty flimsy and it is easily caught up on innocuous lumps and bumps. It has had a bit of attention uh, by the looks of it. It seems to be that some other motoring riders have given it a touch on the dirt or rocks or whatever and it has folded back the plastic in places. That's not a good sign. These vehicles are intended for reasonable use and if I owned a Rexton, I wouldn't be driving it on real hardcore stuff. I would stick to well-maintained dry dirt tracks at most, but that's where it will do well. That's where it will excel, but it is really not intended for anything beyond that. In terms of practicality and comfort, you're pretty well served in the Rexton. That screen is not big enough to my reckoning, and there is a bigger screen coming with the update, but all in all, everywhere else, it is pretty good. Plenty of storage spaces, all sort of slickly hidden away behind sliding lids. The seats are really comfortable. Up front, you're best served. Second row, also pretty comfortable with plenty of head, leg and knee room. And the third row isn't as diabolical as you might imagine. It's a nice looking interior. It's neat and tidy. It certainly has a real prestige feel about it. And at this price point, that is pretty impressive. As is the case with most seven-seater wagons, there's not a lot of space at the back here when all three rows of seats are in use. But no problem, because you can open up a fair bit of flexibility in terms of how much you can pack and what you can pack when you put those rows of seats down. You can use different configurations to suit max tracks, first aid kits, that sort of thing. The Rexton has a 2.2 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine and that produces 141 kilowatts and 449 newton metres and it is matched to an eight speed automatic transmission. In terms of off-roading, it has a part-time four wheel drive system and that has selectable low range and high range. This engine and automatic transmission are a very relaxed combination, almost lacklustre I might say. On the open road, it's perfectly adequate but when you're off-roading, there's a little bit of a difference there, but we'll get to that soon. The Rexton is a decent on-road cruiser, although its engine and auto are a little bit lacklustre and its brakes are a touch spongy and that throttle is slow to take up action. When you do get off-road, things don't get a whole lot better. This is not a real hardcore four-wheel drive. In fact, it's not even a medium-duty four-wheel drive. I reckon the Rexton should stick to real light four-wheel driving duties. A dry, well-maintained dirt track with very few potholes and very few corrugations because while it's fit for purpose, if you're going to tackle that sort of stuff, 
it is not fit for purpose if you plan on tackling anything more challenging than that because it simply doesn't have the physical measurements, the off-road angles, the ground clearance to cope with anything more severe than light corrugations and a well-maintained dirt track. If you do push it a little harder and a little bit beyond its limits, you will find that you may incur a little bit of damage to the vehicle because the Rexton is quite low. It's got a ground clearance listed of 203 mil. To me, it could be even less than that because it does seem very prone, very vulnerable to underbody scrapes, even through terrain you would think is pretty harmless. Having said that, it does have solid mechanicals as a platform. It does have good low and high range four wheel drive gearing and it can creep along nicely. The tyres are a little bit of a letdown. These tyres are Kumos, they're described as all season tyres but if you're going to go any further than a sealed surface or a very well maintained bush track you could always opt for a more aggressive set of all terrains. The auto locking rear diff is a great idea in theory but in practice it can be a little bit clunky, it can be a little bit annoying, engaging, disengaging when it sees fit and that can really bleed you of all your momentum and that's not a great thing to happen when you're trying to climb a steep set of rock steps or a hill climb, it really it's, it's far from ideal. You really need to keep the throttle on to get that auto rear diff lock engaging and that's not a good thing because often you just need steady controlled momentum rather than full bore momentum to get you up and over a serious challenge. The Rexton also has independent suspension all around so it doesn't have a live rear axle which that steps it outside of the realm of other four-wheel drive wagons. And that suspension setup yields a pretty jittery ride in the Rexton, especially over even light corrugated dirt tracks. You really tend to skip around and bounce around in it. It might sound like I'm being pretty harsh on the Rexton, but I'm actually not, and it's actually a really well put together SUV. It's just not intended as a four-wheel drive for anything more than light duty off-roading, and that's perfectly fine because if you're looking for a comfortable, refined seven-seat four-wheel drive wagon at a reasonable price point, then you could do worse than to look at the Sanyong Rexton. But it is not a hardcore four-wheel drive. And this test is about off-roading and its flaws are really quite obvious quite quickly but that doesn't take anything away from its ability to be a great all-rounder elsewhere if it's predominantly used as a daily driver, as a family fun vehicle to your favourite campsite and to take on tracks that maybe are just outside of the realm of a two-wheel drive vehicle but this would be able to handle light duty four-wheel driving, that sort of stuff quite comfortably. Fuel consumption in the Rexton is a listed 8.7 litres per 100 kilometres and that's on a combined cycle. On this test which involved a lot of low and high range four wheel driving I recorded 10.8 litres per 100 kilometres. Now the Rexton has a 70 litre fuel tank so going by my test figures you could reasonably expect to get a driving range of about 650 kilometres out of a full tank. The Rexton doesn't have an ANCAP safety rating because it hasn't been tested, but it does have a bunch of driver assist tech on board, including AEB, a 360 degree camera, and much more. For even more details on this vehicle, read my full written review at carsguide.com.au.
The Rexton is covered by a seven year unlimited kilometre warranty and that has plenty of appeal if you're looking at buying an SUV like this. It's also covered by seven years cap price servicing and seven years of roadside assistance. Now those servicing intervals are set at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres and according to Sanyong that will cost you 375 bucks a pop. The Sanyong Rexton is a perfectly adequate daily driver and it makes a lot of sense as a functional seven-seater wagon and it certainly signals a step in the right direction for Sanyong in terms of all-round quality. But this is no hardcore four-wheel drive and if you're looking for a vehicle that fits into that for you then look elsewhere but it is a perfectly adequate city-focused SUV and it has a lot going for it in terms of appeal for value for money with that seven-year warranty and all of those standard features that they pack into it. But what do you reckon? Have your say in the comments section below and make sure to read my full written review at the Cars Guide website that's carsguide.com.au